Okay, the part two video, we're going to talk about what controls filtration rate. And the reason I wanted to do two videos is because I want to come back and I want to remind you of something we talked about earlier in the course. I'll put it up here. We talked about uh, capillary filtration. So how do you get blood out of the capillaries and how do you get back in? There's two pressures. There's one that was called HPC, and that was hydrostatic pressure of the capillary. And it starts at one end at 35, and at the other end, it drops to about 17 millimeters of mercury. So one of the pressures that controls fluid out of a capillary is hydrostatic pressure of the capillary, which is essentially blood pressure. And there's another pressure, and that was osmotic pressure of the capillary. And that pulled back in at 25 millimeters. And that was created because there was all this albumin, this protein, that through osmosis wanted to pull water towards concentration. Uh, concentration. Osmosis is pulling water towards concentration. If you put a bunch of albumin in, albumin in here, it's going to pull some of that water back. It pulls the water back at 25. The same kind of pressures are working in the glomerulus. There's three pressures technically. The first pressure we'll talk about is something very similar to this HPC. And it's essentially blood pressure. In the glomerulus, it's called HPG. It's called HPG because it's the hydrostatic pressure of the glomerulus now instead of the hydrostatic pressure of the capillary. And it's about 45 millimeters of mercury. Then go ahead and write this down over here. H P G equals hydrostatic pressure of glomerulus. This is equal to 45 millimeters of mercury. There's a similar HP pressure that pushes back and it's called H P C. Now up here the C stood for capillary. Down here it means capsule. And so H P C equals hydrostatic pressure capsule. This is about 10 millimeters of mercury. And it's pushing the opposite direction of H P G. The other pressure we have also pushes in the same direction of HPG. It's opposite of HPG, and that's something called OPG. This is equal to about 28 millimeters of mercury. So OPG equals osmotic pressure of gradients. Uh, sorry osmotic pressure of glomerulus. Not thinking. And this is equal to 28 millimeters of mercury. And again, this is pushing in the opposite direction. So you got 45 pushing this way, 10 pushing back this way, and another 28 pushing back this way. What that results then is, is a net 7 millimeters of mercury pushing in this direction. So we add these up, we get 7 millimeters of mercury. That's pretty small pressure. And it's a really small pressure <coughs> when you consider that blood pressure can vary by a considerable amount. We have a very small pressure. If this blood pressure were able to shift at all, we're able to move lower, down by 10, then all of a sudden filtration would head in the opposite direction. So it's a very, very, very small pressure. What that should tell you is that I need a lot of other control mechanisms to make sure that that 7 millimeters of mercury is always just enough to push just enough fluid to make this rate perfect. If it goes through too fast again, you're going to lose things to the urine that you want. And if it goes through too slow, then everything is going to creep along and things like urea will have a chance to get back into the peritubular capillaries. Part 3 video is going to discuss those control mechanisms.